Good day, everyone. This is International Master Robert Jamison from Melbourne, Australia. And I've found this cool uh, website called uh, Create the Best Chess Player Ever Tier List. So it has all these pictures of famous chess players and you've got to rank them, apparently. So I thought it might be a bit of fun to have a go at this from an Australian point of view, because I've uh, certainly seen a lot of these players in action, read their books, read all about them, even played one or two of them. So let's see how we go and compare your uh, thoughts on it with me. So um, now I'm a bit worried, though. There isn't a, a, a category saying this bloke is crap and shouldn't be on the best list. So I'm not sure what I do if I have someone in that category. So let's get started. Akiba Rubenstein. OK, well, he was never world champion, but they reckon about 1914 or so, he was the best in the world, a smidgen ahead of Emmanuel Lasker. But then, of course, World War One came along. So I reckon he is a bit unlucky. So we'll put him in the great and unlucky spot. Alexander Alakine, uh, well, world champion for quite a while. In the th early 30s, after he beat Capablanca, he crushed everyone in some tournaments. Clearly world number one at the time. So I reckon he's undisputed number one. A bit of a drunkard, but uh, didn't affect his chest too much. Anand, well, he's a bit unlucky, I guess, because he's come along. He's been world champion for a bit, but he's overlapped with Kasparov and, and uh, Carlson. So they've uh, taken a few years off his uh, tenure as world champion, I guess. So I reckon he was a bit unlucky. And Adolf Anderson. Now, well, how unlucky can you be? You're the best chess player in the world, and then Paul Morphy comes along. That was a bit of a bummer. Um, so uh, he won, I think, London 1851, the first international chess tournament. And then Morphy came along and beat him. So he was pretty unlucky. We'll chuck him in there. David, that would be David Bronstein. Well, he was never world champion, uh, but he did draw a match with Mikhail Botvinnik, and Botvinnik held the title because the match was a draw, so you can't get more unlucky than that. So he's unlucky. Uh, Capablanca, well, okay, what can I say about Capablanca? Um, I'll put him up as undisputed number one. We'll do the god bit later once we've got them all in position. Magnus, well, he's undisputed number one, no doubt about that. Max Erva, I played him in the Simmel when he came to Melbourne in 1977. I was helping the two kids beside me in the Simmel. They both won. I lost. A bit tragic. He was a very good positional player. Um, I'd say he'd be a theorist. Wrote quite a lot of chess books. Fabby. Well, what's Fabi ever done? Played in a World Championship match, maybe? Yeah, I don't think he's that great. I'll put him in theorist. Fine, Ruben Fine. Well, gave up chess to become a uh, doctor of uh, psychology or something like that. They said it was a great loss for chess and at best a draw for psychology. So um, he's a bit of an enigma. Um, don't know that he's great. Oh, he's a theorist. He wrote basic chess endgames, the manual on endgames. So we'll put him in theorist. Bobby, well, Bobby's undisputed number one. He goes up there, no doubt about that. Um, Harry, that's Harry Nelson Pillsbury. He was a bit of a, a polymath. He, he could give a, a, a similar chess, play a hand of whist, get told 30 really long, stupid words and recite them back again and then back to front, recite them again. And he must have had a pretty good memory. So I think he ended up dying from syphilis or something like that in St. Petersburg very early in life. Um, he was a rival of Lasker for number one. Uh, so he died a bit early and a bit unlucky, I reckon. One Hastings 1895 was his big tournament. Did very well there. Hickaroo. Well, what's he ever done except have a website and have a million followers or something or other? Um, so I better put him as theorist. Chucky. Well, that's a Van Chuck. Um, they say everyone's scared of him and he lives on his own sort of planet, planet of Van Chuck and can beat anyone on his day. Um... 
He's a little bit of a legend from that point of view. I think maybe we'll put him under legend. Judith, Judith Polgar, the strongest woman of all time. She's beaten so many world champions. Um, well, she'd have to be a legend, I think. Uh, her only rival, I guess, was uh, Vera Menchik, uh, a lady who lived in England during the war and was undisputed world champion. I think she drew with Capablanca and beat a lot of grandmasters. And then Adolf Hitler dropped a bomb on her house in Hastings and she was hiding under the staircase with her mum and they both died. So that was a bit tragic. Never mind. Uh, Karpov. Oh, now he's my favourite. Um He's not undisputed number one because Bobby was still around, but he's certainly a legend, so we'll put Karpov in the legend. Um, he toured Australia in a simul once, and silly me, I decided not to play him. Could be my only chance to play Karpov, but I missed out. Kasparov, well, he's undisputed number one. Uh, they're only a little teensy winksy bit better than Karpov. Kerez, Paul Kerez. Ah, oh, he his claim to fame as being one of the strongest players to be number two in the world and never be world champion. Um, he died pretty young too. I think he was playing the Canadian Open when he was about fifty nine and never made it home. So he would be unlucky, I'd say. There is a bit of a rumor that in the nineteen, I think it was forty eight World Championship uh, match after Alakine died, they had a match to decide who's going to be or a tournament with half a dozen people to decide who's going to be the world champion. And the uh, Kira's, of course, was from Estonia. And the theory is that the Russians told him to lose his games to Botvinnik. So Botvinnik, the Russian, could be world champion. Now, Kira's lost his first four games and then Botvinnik had a kill lead and he beat him in the last round or something. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. But he was certainly unlucky. Khan. Okay, this is Mir Sultan Khan. He was like an Indian servant and his master came and toured Europe and stayed in England a bit and Khan got to play chess and won the British Championship and I think he drew with Capablanca or beat Capablanca occasionally and stuff like that. So he was like a, an amazing prodigy. Um, then went back to India and was never heard of again. Um, is he a legend? No. I reckon he's a bit unlucky. Because, uh, I mean, if he wasn't the servant of some sultan in India, he could have played chess all his life and been even better. Victor Korshnoi, Victor the Terrible, uh, another candidate for the uh, strongest player never to be world champion. He and Karpov had a great rivalry, but Karpov was just a bit better. Um, was he unlucky? Mm, possibly. I think anyone who plays Karpov is probably a bit unlucky. All right, we'll put him in the unlucky. Lasker. All right. Well, he held the World Championship for longer than anyone else. I mean, like 27 years. So he didn't play too much chess. And they say he picked his opponent, so he played picked someone he could, knew he could beat instead of playing Rubenstein or Nimzovich or someone like that. Um, now, is he a legend? I guess he's a legend. I don't think he's undisputed, number one, because Capablanca was around a bit and Rubenstein was around a bit and Pillsbury and others. But well, he's a legend because he's held the World Championship for so long. Mikhail Botvinnik, the Russian World Champion. He was World Champion for a long time, but he kept either losing the title and winning it in a playoff back again or having a draw. So he wasn't exactly head and shoulders above everyone else. He's a pretty good coach, so he, he sort of coached uh, Kasparov when he was 10 and stuff like that and turned out all these famous players. Um, legend, great and lucky. I reckon he was a bit lucky because he could have lost some of those World Championship matches that he drew, like with Smyslov and uh, Bronstein. All right. Paul Morphy, well, what do you say? Undisputed number one. He crushed everyone and offered to give anyone... Hoard and move start in a match, and they're all too scared to play him, so he retired from chess. Nez. Now, some of you might not know him. He's not even a grandmaster. His name's Rashid Nezmedinov, a Latvian player, I think. Um, and he's really good at attacking. He could play against Tal and attack the blazers out of him and towel him up. 
and he did probably the best chess uh, queen sacrifice of all time. Sacrificed his queen for a couple of pieces or something and played on and outplayed his opponent. Um, I think he's I think he's an attacking legend. Maybe not a terribly well known one, but those who do know him swear by him. Now Nimzo, Aaron Nimzovich, never world champion, could have challenged Laska and had a good chance against him, but never got a match. He was a bit of a theorist though. He wrote a book called My System which I managed to read, though it's incredibly hard work. But they're meant to be a classic. Philidor, well, uh, French uh, musician and chess player, undisputed number one in the world. Got a defence named after him, Philidor's Defence, but we haven't seen many of his games. I think there's only a handful of his games survived to see how well he played. He reckoned pawns were the soul of chess. Well, anyway, he must be undisputed number one in the late 1700s smyslov okay i like his style he was a nice positional player and he was world champion for a little bit but then bob Finney got him in the return match um he was a bit of a theorist too wrote uh rook end games uh very good in the end game i think i put him down as a theorist Boris Spassky. Now, I played Boris in a civil once and managed to get a draw off him. And we were going to have a match of tennis afterwards because we're both keen tennis players. But it rained, alas. So I never got to say I beat Boris Spassky at tennis. Never mind. Um, well, undisputed number one, no. Legend. Maybe not. Great and lucky. Great and unlucky. Hmm. Well, he beat Petrosian and then lost to Fisher. Is it unlucky you have to play Fisher? Oh, I reckon he's a bit unlucky. Yep, all right, we'll put him in unlucky. Wilhelm Steinitz. All right, he was a funny chap. Had a punch up with Blackburn once and got thrown out of the window of the chess club or something, apparently, by Blackburn. He's a temperamental uh, little chap from uh, Austria. Later, America and, and uh, England. Um, he's world champion for a long time, but maybe not undisputed. Actually, he sort of claims to be world champion, I think, from 1866, but in practice, I think they give it to him from 1886 or something like that, because it's very hard to claim to be world champion when Morphy is still alive. I think Morphy died about 1884. So afterwards, Steiners played Zuka Torta and the winner said they were world champion. Um, actually, if I say undisputed number one, he can't be undisputed number one because there was a, a tournament, I think it was uh, London 1890, 1883, something like that. And they afterwards they had a big dinner and the president of the Chess Federation got up and gave a speech and he proposed a toast to the world chess champion. So guess who got up to respond to the toast? Steinitz got up because he was really good at matches and he thought he was the world champion. And Zukertort got up because he'd just won the tournament and he was really good at tournaments and he thought he was the world champion. <laughs> so that was a bit embarrassing. So Steinitz was an undisputed number one. Um, I'll put him down as great... Maybe a bit lucky. He held it for a long time. Oh, Tal. Well, he's definitely a legend, a hacking legend, not undisputed number one. I played him. Um, I was lucky enough to get a draw, largely because it was a telly chess match and we only got to play about 30 moves and then it had to be adjudicated, but it was even at the time. So I can claim to have drawn with the world champion. Or I put him in attacking legend. Another funny thing, he's only got three fingers on his uh, on his right hand, I think. I never knew that. And then I saw a photo and he's he's only got three fingers. All right. Uh, Tarash. Well, he was a grumpy old German doctor, a rival of Lasca. Played a couple of matches with Lasca. And uh, before one match, he said, uh, I have only two words for here, Lasca. Check and mate. Only trouble was he didn't get to say him very often because Lasker towed him up. Um, I think he's a theorist. 
because of a dogmatic chap, wrote a lot of books. Tigran Petrosian, all right, probably the greatest defender of all time. Um, he was world champion for six years or something, but he never sort of dominated. He was hard to beat in matches, but he never won a lot of tournaments. Uh, he's probably a little bit lucky to be world champion, I think, so we'll chuck him in as great and lucky. Top a lot. Well, don't know much about him. Um, I think he was world champion for a smidgen. But, of course, he bumps into Kasparov and Carlson and Anand and Kramnik and all right, so um, I'll chuck him in as theorist. And Vlad. Now, this is not Vlad the Impaler. This is uh, Vladimir Kramnik, I'm thinking, who beat Kasparov, the only person ever to beat Kasparov in a match. So he must be pretty good. Um, didn't hold the title for too long. Um Great and lucky, great and unlucky. I think he's a little bit unlucky to have all those rivals. So there we go. Uh, all right. So I've run out of people. Now, God of Chess. Now, this is the difficult part because are we a polytheist place with with uh, one God? Uh, or, sorry, multi-gods? Or are we monotheist and we've got multi-gods? How many gods of chess are we allowed to have? Hmm. All right. Well, for me, the god of chess is Bobby Fischer. No doubt about that. He dominated like no one else has dominated. Um, Capablanca? Hmm. I think he's a god of chess as well. Alaska said something like, um, I've met many great chess players, but one only one chess genius, Capablanca. All right. Magnus, is he a god of chess? Well, he pretty much dominates everyone. And these days we have rapid and blitz and normal chess and all sorts of stuff, and he still wins just about everything. Uh, so I reckon he's a god of chess. Morphy, oh, I think you'd have to have Morphy as a god. Certainly the god of the 19th century, and he played so many fantastic games. You're giving lessons to beginners, and you will show them heaps of Morphy games because they're so exciting. Uh, Kasparov, is he a god of chess? He certainly thinks he's a god of chess. Had a rivalry with Karpov. Um... I don't know. I think I might leave him an undisputed number one. I'm a more a Karpov than a Kasparov sort of fan. All right. So we've finished our list. I hope you agree with me. But there's one burning question. Where's this chap over here? Where's where's Hands? Surely Hands should be up there. He towels up Magnus all the time and stuff like that. So maybe when we come to do the list in a few years' time, Hands will be up there. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my uh, waffling on about all these great chess players and I'll see you in the next video.